So if you are a trader and you do these six things, I guarantee you will not make money in trading. So let me tell you about something called survivorship bias. Now survivorship bias is the guy that comes on podcasts or the guy that you see on the internet and he comes on and he preaches about working long hours, working 16 hours a day, surviving on Red Bull and takeaway. And he's telling you that to achieve success, you have to work hard, give up everything else. And that's because that's exactly what he did in his journey. And now look at him now at the top of the mountain. Well, that's exactly what the survivorship bias is. It's easy for the one person that makes it to the top of the mountain and preach to everybody else and say, this is how I did it. Therefore, this is what you need to do. Now, the reality is, and Khabib said it best, is that it's not about working hard because there's so many people that work hard. There's so many people that give the same sacrifices of working long hours. Look at the people that work in construction. Look at the people that work in labor camps. In actuality, it does not come down to working hard. It comes down to a lot of other factors. So we've all heard of that statistic that 99% of traders lose money. We all think we are different. We all think we are not going to be part of that statistic. And it is that ignorance and naive that is going to put us in that statistic category. So in this video, here are my tips. And once again, it's not going to be generic things of risk management and not over trading and the things you've all heard about. But I'm going to talk about things that I stopped doing in my personal trading career to help you make millions in trading. And what I want you to keep in the back of your mind during this video is the virtue of a profitable trader is not the things that you do, rather it's the things that you don't do. So onto my first point, that is the risk to reward of prop firms. So in trading, we all know what risk to reward is. And that is if we risk 1%, ideally, we want to make 3% or 5% or even 10%, let's say. The goal being we want to have a positive risk to reward so that when we do risk in the market, we gain more than we risked. But people don't think of the risk to reward of their portfolio, of their career. And that's something I do think is quite important. So back in 2018, 2019, when FTMO was the first prop firm in the market, some of the members I had around me, those were the first people to pass the prop firm challenges. So now five years later, we see prop firms everywhere. There's probably dozens and dozens of prop firms to pick from and the industry has changed and the mentality of traders has therefore changed because the opportunity has changed. Now you don't need 10K in a trading account to get started. Now you don't need 25K to get started in the stock market. Now you can start with $50, $100 and buy a prop firm challenge. So now that the barrier to entry is so low and it's so affordable, now that means access becomes a lot easier and a lot more people access the market and therefore a lot more of the wrong type of people access the market. And that does become a problem because now we lose sight of the proper trajectory and the proper career path of a trader where initially you would develop the skill set and that might take you one, two, three, years, test, play around on a demo account, build a strategy back test. And when you were confident, when you had a track record, when you were ready, then you would take your life savings and put it into a trading account because you had the confidence of the work you had done before. Now things are all over the place because traders come their first week in trading, they'll jump right into a prop firm challenge. They'll do their first mentorship and jump right into a prop firm account because it's so accessible and so affordable. And therefore people directly keep paying and paying and paying for prop firm challenges. And I have a few friends who are affiliates for prop firms and they tell me that the majority of prop firm accounts that are sold are not the 400k accounts are not the 200k accounts, are not the 100k accounts. It's the accounts that are right at the bottom, the 5k accounts, the 10k account. Now, what does that tell me? That tells me that the trader is not really confident in themselves. So they just want to put a little bit of money into the prop firm challenge and see how it goes. Now, there's two problems with this. Number one, you just think, let me just put $100 in and see what happens. First of all, nothing in trading should be, let's see what happens. It should be, I am ready, let's go for this. Number two, you fool yourself into thinking, oh, I just paid $50 and you failed it. Okay, let me just put another $50 and another $50. So this puts you in an end a cycle of one more challenge, one more challenge, and then you might end up spending a lot more money than you initially anticipated because you just justify it one more time, one more time. So not only do you end up spending a lot more money than initially anticipated and wasting a lot more money than initially anticipated because you are now paying for challenges and putting money into the market before you are ready. But if you had a huge barrier to entry, for example, you wanted to put 10K into a trading account and that was your hard earned money that you had saved, you would be sure that you trade with exact risk management. You would be sure that you trade when you're exactly ready and you have a track record and you are confident in yourself. Now people just want to pass a funded challenge with one or two trades. They just want to get lucky and pass it on a whim. But the second mindset problem that I believe people have is because they are buying the more affordable $50, $100 challenges, they are hoping that let me pass the 5k account. So they'll do phase one, phase two, and then they want to make a withdrawal. And then from that first withdrawal, then they want to pay for the 10k account. Then they want to do phase one, phase two, take another withdrawal, pay for the 50k account, take a phase one, phase two, take a withdrawal, then put money towards a 100k account. But the reality is how much time are you wasting along the way because you don't even make it to the 50k account on the first challenge you fail or you pass phase one phase two fail then you pay again and then you fail and then you pay again and you're hoping to scale all the way up and that's what the prop firms want you to think they want you to think be a sensible trader and slowly scale your way up to 400k in funding and showing consistent returns and that's exactly what you should be doing you should be proving to yourself that you're profitable and slowly building a track record and slowly scaling up but the caveat there is you should only be doing that if you have a proven strategy and a track record of proven 
proven profitability. If you don't have that in place and you're trying to do the correct thing, which is scale, and you don't know what you're doing, you're not going to scale. You're going to keep paying and losing, paying and losing. So now what I think the best advice is, is stop doing that. Rather, what you got to think is the risk to reward of the prop phone challenges. Now what that means is, instead of trying to hit a home run with your first challenge and think my risk reward needs to be, I buy one challenge and that first challenge that I buy has to be the one that I make a payout on. That's a lot of pressure you're putting on yourself and a lot of emotional weight you have on your shoulders because you're going to have desperation, you're going to have fear, you're going to have greed, you're going to have urgency, and you're going to be putting all of this external pressure on yourself that I have to make it with this first account. But when do we ever think like that in the market? We never think the next trade that I take has to be the winning trade. No, we know that sometimes you have winners, sometimes you have losses, and that's part of the trading game. Use that mentality and use that framework also for your prop firm journey. Let's say you have a budget of $5,000 and that $5,000 is supposed to last you over one year. What I'd say is put that $5,000 to a side or save up to that amount and spend one year studying, building your track record, building your journal and building your self-confidence to know that you are a profitable trader for more than a quarter, minimum six months before you even consider taking a prop firm challenge. Next, once you have proven to yourself that you are a profitable trader and you have proven to yourself that you're profitable over time, then when it comes time to doing the prop firm challenges, the pressure's not on. You don't have to hit that home run. Rather, you can take your time because you know you are profitable. So what you do is you have this budget of, let's say 5K. And now what you do is you buy an appropriate challenge, a smaller one, let's say a 50K challenge, but you don't think this is the one that I need to pass on. What I would say is spend that whole 5K budget on multiple accounts. So you don't have that burden of, am I going to blow it or all of that pressure on one account? And what you do is you do a staggering effect. So let's say you have 10 accounts. Start one on the Monday, start one on the Friday, and then the next one, the next Monday, the next one, the next Friday. So what you'll do is as time goes along, you'll be starting different accounts. You link them all to a copy trader and you're executing the same trades. But the thing is, because you know you are profitable over time, maybe you have a bad start because you're a bit nervous because you're new to the prop firms. That's okay because if you have a dip, maybe you blow the first account. But the one that you started after that or the one that you started after that is not affected. So over time, you might have spikes, peaks and troughs in your trading performance. But one of those accounts along the way is going to catch the consistent run. And because you have no pressure of, I need to pass this account, the first account, you just know that I need to trade as I have been, but I don't have the anxiety of having to perform on the pedestal of a prop firm challenge. Rather, you remove that element. And I have a few friends who are successful prop firm traders, shout out to Paladin and Omar and many others. They've taken a lot of withdrawals from prop firms. And what they say is they are most successful and they started to pass the challenges and they started to make withdrawals when the pressure was off them. When they didn't focus so much on the prop firm challenge, rather they traded it normally. I think that is quite important to note. So treat the prop firms like a trading account. You don't care too much about one win on one loss. You care about overall performance over time. And what you do is you feed the profits you make back into buying challenges so that maybe you look back after six months and you say, man, I completely blew 30 accounts. Maybe 10 accounts made it to a live and maybe out of those 10, only three of them made it to a payout. So overall, your performance wasn't the best. The win rate of your prop firms wasn't the best. Over time, that will improve. But in the end, the important thing is your risk to reward of the money you put in, let's say 5K you put into buying loads of challenges, the reward was maybe you took 10 or 20K in payouts and that 10 or 20K in payouts, you put that back into buying more challenges and you scale your way up like that. So there's no pressure on one account. There's no pressure on one week or one month of trading. You just stagger them across and perform as you always do. And overall, that portfolio and system will lead to certain accounts blowing, certain accounts making a payout. And you just grow exponentially like that to the point where you will scale up to having 10, 20, 30 live accounts, some of them big, some of them small. And then you scale up to max allocation on each platform as time goes on. And like many traders are, you become max allocated on multiple and having one, two or $3 million in funding. And that's when you can start taking money out of the market, not to buy more challenges, but actually to finally start paying yourself. But the problem is people put so much pressure to say, I bought one account. They buy the one that is maximum in their budget. Then they say, I have to pass the phase one of this and the phase two, and then make a payout and survive off this trading account. It is so much pressure on just one small window of trading that I have to perform in the next 30 days because it's make or break. That's not the reality of a trader. Even the best of traders, even the best of hedge funds will have a losing week and a losing month. So don't be naive to the fact that when you want your win to come because it's a prop firm time, don't be naive to the fact you could also have a losing streak and a losing period. So rather diversify everything. Don't put too much pressure on one account, just like you don't put too much pressure on one trade and take your time with a staggered approach and then just feed it back into buying more challenges until you start to reach max allocation. And I think that is the key to prop firms that a lot of people don't even consider. My next point is the game and the art of mentorship. Now, the notion that a lot of people have is more mentorships equals more knowledge equals better trader. Now, that is not necessarily true. Not to talk bad about certain mentors or anything like that. It's more to say, if you just research the mentorships out there and pick the two or three most qualified ones with the best reviews, with the best results in terms of profitable traders, in terms of does the mentor live the life you want to live and trade as you want to trade? And has he been around for several years, not just one or two years? Once you've done your pre-qualifying process, you don't need to buy mentorships from the top 20 mentors or the top 10 mentors. The reality is you only need to buy from one or two maximum. But the problem is people think, let me learn 
learn from him. I'm struggling. It's not working. And it becomes the typical cycle of first step, uninformed optimism. They think that this mentor is amazing. I'm going to learn everything I need from him. He's going to change my life. And therefore, I'm going to buy his mentorship. You're optimistic, but you're uninformed. Next step becomes informed pessimism. So you start off on a high with optimism and then you become pessimism. You say, okay, you really realize that this mentorship is harder than I thought, or it takes more knowledge than I required or requires more studying than I thought. And then you become a little bit pessimistic, but you don't lose hope. You know that what you need to do is a lot of work. It's not as easy as you thought, but you'll get there. And then later on, as time goes on and it gets difficult and maybe you don't have the correct support, maybe the strategy doesn't even work because it wasn't the best education. You enter what we call the valley of despair. And that valley of despair is where you lose hope. You don't see a light at the end of the tunnel and you feel hopeless. And therefore you think, let me jump to another mentor. And what does that mean? You jump back to the first step of the cycle, which is uninformed optimism. You see a new mentor with a shiny new strategy, with better risk reward, with better entries, with a better win rate. And you think that's the guy I needed. The problem was not me. The problem was this mentorship. And then you go back to informed optimism. You buy a new mentorship and then you find out the realities and you go to informed pessimism. And once again, inevitably you end up in the valley of despair. And then that's when you jump to another mentorship. And that becomes an endless cycle that people end up in from mentorship to mentorship. And they don't stop to think that the problem could be them. And the reality is, and what advice I'll give to my younger self is pick one or two credible mentors. Credible mentor means they have real results. Their students have made withdrawals and they live the life you want to live. And they have shown a track record. Once you have these things in place, then you give it your all. You learn everything, you study everything and you believe it for what it is. Then you enter the phase of informed pessimism. Now, when you are in that phase, what you do not do is allow yourself to fall into the valley of despair. You recognize it's going to be hard, but this is what you do. You realize that you do not need more information. That is a fallacy that a lot of traders have is that I'm losing my trading. It means I don't know enough. Let me go and buy more education. Incorrect. Once you have a base level of knowledge, once you understand baby pips and the general things on YouTube and becoming a beginner trader, then you learn one advanced strategy or two advanced strategies. That is what I would consider the 80-20. You don't need to do more education. You've done a sufficient amount of education. Now what you require and what you are lacking most likely is market IQ, market intuition, market experience. That's what you need to go and search for. No mentorship is going to give you that. No education is going to give you that. No YouTube video is going to give you that. The only way to gain real market IQ and real market experience is spending an extended amount of time with one currency pair. So what I've done for the last two years, I haven't studied more concepts. I haven't researched YouTube videos. I haven't bought any mentorships. What I've done is I've taken the knowledge I have, which I believe is quite high. And then I just go deep into market experience. So I have not missed a single candle on Euro USD or GBP USD for the last two years from London open to London close that includes New York session and New York open. I haven't missed a single candle in about two years. Now, as you can imagine, I have such a depth of knowledge just by seeing the nature of price, watching the market day in, day out, watching all of the daily cycle variants, getting accustomed to the momentum shifts, the momentum changes, how price interacts, how price moves when it comes to a news event, the seasonalities of the different months. I've become so aware and so accustomed to how London opens, how Frankfurt session opens, how price reacts around Asia range. It becomes second nature. And because I'm not looking at 20 pairs, I'm super focused on just two pairs. That has given me so much confidence and so much experience because I see the same trade models play day in, day out. I see the same daily cycle variants playing day in, day out. And I'm able to recognize when it is my trading day and when it is not my trading day. Because when I have my models, I'll be able to realize this day does not fit one of my daily cycles. This day does not fit any of my trading models. Therefore, today I sit out and I have that market experience and judgment. But that cannot come from building a strategy and watching a course. Because when you watch a course, most mentors, all they will give you is a bunch of information and a bunch of confluences, which is what you need. But the reality is it's not about the confluences that you had, because in the end, every single strategy works. There is no bad strategy. There's only bad traders. And that's why every single strategy exists, because for somebody out there, it is profitable and it is working. And that's why it exists as a strategy. Now, the problem becomes is people apply it wrong and the majority of people lose with that strategy and they say that strategy doesn't work. Well, no, the trader didn't work. The strategy did when applied correctly. It's not about knowing more information. It's not about that you didn't know how the strategy worked. It was that you did not have a hierarchy of confirmations and how to combine your confirmations into a trade model and a trading plan. Now, let's dig deeper into that point. Let's say I give you a trading plan with 20 confirmations. Now, I might take a trade within that trading confirmation set and that might be pivoting around Asia range, market structure, pro trend, trading into a supply zone, trading with London session open, trading with an inducement, trading with compression leading into the POI, trading with lower time frame confirmations with a liquidity pool target. And I might have 10, 11 confirmations going into my trade. And that is me using the confirmations I had. And that's what I should be doing. But there might be another trader now who maybe says, I have these four confirmations. I have my Asia range liquidity. I have London open and I have a supply zone. So they think, okay, I have three or four good confirmations. This is what I learned in the course. And therefore I'm going to see these confirmations playing out and take a trade because that's what I learned. And that's what I'm supposed to do in my strategy. The problem is, yes, you learn the information. Yes, you took the confirmations that were valid. And yes, you took a trade based on those confirmations, but that is not a trade 
trading plan. What you need to do is take your confirmations, build it into a trade model, and then know when you're supposed to execute and when you're supposed to not execute. For example, I know in my strategy where I might have five confirmations and those five confirmations mean I don't take a trade. I might also have another market situation where I have once again five confirmations, but I have the five key confirmations, which means I do take the trade. So then it doesn't become about having five confirmations or not. It becomes about the quality of the confirmations and how they combine and what is the minimum confirmations I need. For example, you can say to yourself, I always need London session and I always need pro trend. You put those as your minimum requirements and then you say to yourself, when I have my minimum requirements, which supplementary confluences can I have? And if they are lacking, you don't take a trade. That last step can only come from market experience and market IQ to know how to separate your confluences into a hierarchy and know which ones are essential and which ones are preferred. For example, I can take a trade that is counter trend. Therefore, if I have all of my mandatory confirmations, but it is not pro trend, I will still take the trade. So therefore, I've recognized that I can take counter trend trades and therefore it's not a minimum requirement to be pro trend. It is just a preferred criteria, not an essential criteria. So you need to then build out your education and build out everything you've learned into these non-essential and essential criteria, having your hierarchy of confirmations and building that into trade models. And that only comes from an extended amount of time in the market and building a relationship with one or two pairs and building that market IQ and market intuition. My next point is stop falling for the glitz and glamour of the industry. Now, the trading industry is made to look very easy. It's made to look like the pinnacle of success. And there's reasons for that because there's a lot of people that have ulterior motives and hidden agendas. So what you need to do is unveil that mask that they put on and see behind the curtain of what the reality of the industry is. Now, I'm not talking about generic things. I'm talking about things you should really look out for. Number one is if you're constantly seeing promotions, if you're constantly seeing discounts, if you're constantly seeing offers for this week only, you need to only get 8% to pass this prop firm challenge. Or for this time only, you'll get double leverage on your brokerage account. Why are people doing that? It's to grab hold of your money and they want you to fall into a feeling of missing out, a feeling of urgency and wanting you to take action from a place of emotion. That is not correct. That is the industry playing you. What you really need to do is remove that mask and realize the promotions are all to make you feel a certain way. The discounts are all to make you feel a certain way. If the prop firms really cared to see if you're a profitable trader and they were giving you real money, they wouldn't give you these discounts. They wouldn't give you these favorable conditions randomly. They just want your money. So be careful of that and be aware that leverage is something crazy in trading. That's why leverage is regulated in the US, for example, where brokerages, officially regulated brokerages in the US, they have a leverage cap of, I think, one to 30. But when you see these offshore brokers where they'll have a one to 100 leverage, one to 500 leverage, but the legal limit is a one to 30, why do they have that? More importantly, look at prop firms. Prop firms is leverage on steroids where you might spend $500 on buying a prop firm challenge account, but that $500 will give you the buying power as if you had a 100K account. And you can make payouts with a value of a $100,000 account. That is once again, leverage. And for me, leverage is very synonymous with gambling because you just fall for the upside. You ignore everything else and you just think, how much money could I make? You think in, in the casino, you think the roulette table, how much money you could make. The same as with for prop firms. You just think I could just put $500 in and I could have a 100K account. This is a no brainer. This is a huge opportunity. 2% could pay my bills. And all of a sudden you fell for the trap of the industry. You don't focus on the skill set. You don't focus on the journey. You don't focus on consistency. You just focus on how much money you could make. And let me just give it a shot. And that is the trap of the industry. Now I'm not even going to mention the craziness that mentors and other traders are getting up to with fake trades, photoshopping, buying their own brokerages, white labeling brokerages to make a fake track record. There's so many tricks and smoke and mirrors out there that you really have to be careful. The newcomer, the new trader will just think, wow, I don't know what I'm doing, but this mentor knows everything, but they might be photoshopping it. They might be faking their trades or they might be putting 20 entries and leaving the good one. And there's so many tricks in the industry that I take it personally. You will never see me doing anything like that. In fact, I can't do it like that because the way I post my trades is, and you can check through my highlights for years. Whenever I post a trade, I take a screenshot when price is approaching my entry. So you'll see my limit and it'll say it's a limit and you'll see exactly when it's executing. You'll see the time on my phone and you can check back on trading view. You can check back on the market and say, when I took that screenshot at 10 past nine in the morning, where was price action at that exact minute? And you'll see it's exactly where it is on my screenshot. So you know exactly when I'm entering. I can't fake that. And then you'll see exactly when I'm exiting. So when the traders play out and then you can see the two screenshots, it can't be Photoshop because it's live time. So you can see exactly the minute I executed. And I think that is super important for any trader that is trying to do anything in the industry. They have to show some form of credibility because there is a million ways to dupe new traders in terms of faking trades, faking accounts, faking brokerages, faking everything that as a newcomer in the industry, you need to stop falling for this glitz and glamour. You need to stop idolizing and edifying these mentors that are pulling tricks and trying to sell you something. The way I look at it is if they are trying to show you how wealthy they are, they're showing you their Lamborghini, they're showing you their fancy cars and fancy holidays and fancy this and that. They're trying to make you feel jealous and envious. They're trying to press on your emotions of you are not wealthy enough, that you are not enough and that you're missing out on the joys of life. So they give you this emotion, they give you this pain and then they sell you the solution, which is buy my X, Y, and Z, buy 
my signals, buy my mentorship, buy my course, buy my prop from whatever it is. You have to be really careful. And as a newcomer, you should stop falling for that and know exactly what you need to see before you justify anything in this industry. And my last point is what I like to refer to as YOLO trades. Now, YOLO trades are something I'm going to make a whole video on because it's a very detailed topic. But just to get your mind thinking on the topic, a YOLO trade is somebody who just jumps in randomly. And that's what a lot of traders do. They'll try and catch the bottom. They'll try and catch the top. They'll try and wick the market. Maybe you see that on Instagram, but we've already just spoke about how that all can be faked. And it is my true belief that the person that gets the wick entry exactly at the top of the market, they're not a profitable trader. Believe me, I've been doing this long enough and I've seen enough traders and I've seen enough profitable traders to know what does and doesn't work. Again, we are not institutions. We do not move the market. It is very unlikely to know where the top of the market is, especially those traders that trade the inducements. What they'll do is they'll think it's an inducement. They'll take a market execution and then they'll get blown. And then price will go higher again. They think, oh, this is the real inducement. They'll take a trade that will get blown. Then they'll take another inducement and say, this is the real one. I just took a stop loss on. This is the real trade. And then maybe that one does play. So they post that on Instagram, but they don't show the five inducements that they just took losses on 10 minutes ago. So you're fooled into thinking that was the trader that took the top of the market. But the reality is that's not the most effective way. The most effective way is seeing the top of the market as a trend progresses. There's going to be plenty of opportunities to re-enter that opportunity, to re-enter that trade. The person that catches the top doesn't mean he's the best trader. He's just a trader that's trying to impress. The really profitable trader is the one that is patient, the one that gets the confirmations, and the one that is waiting for everything to align to get a really secure entry. And usually that's not right at the top. That's a little bit after, but they can catch most of the move, but you don't have to catch the whole move. Catching most of the move is enough to make profit, especially when you add in more confirmations. Therefore, you have a better win rate. You still have a good risk reward and you still capitalize on most of the move. And I think that is something that a lot of people need to stop doing is stop idolizing these mentors and taking these YOLO trades, which is let me just jump in. This was a run of liquidity. Or let me just get in here because I feel like it. Oh, let me just get in here because I have the intuition. All of that YOLO mindset of oh, what's the worst that can happen is just one more trade. It's just one more percent risk. I'm using risk management. YOLO, let me throw in another trade. These all come from lack of discipline or lack of understanding of a strategy, lack of understanding of the market. And this is all decisions driven by emotions of greed, fear of missing out, desperation, urgency. All of these emotions are driving those. But a true, stoic, intelligent, profitable, disciplined trader, they're not doing all of that. They will never take a YOLO trade. They will wait days on end waiting for that perfect confirmation set. And when they see everything align, if one thing is missing, they don't take the trade. But the day that everything does align from their trading plan, they'll execute that trade calmly because they know that this is something that is going to work. And even if it's a loss, it's something that's factored in. Over a long term horizon, this will be profitable. It was just this led to a losing trade. That is the decision you should make. Doesn't matter if it was a loss, you took the right decision. And just because you took a winning trade over here, but you didn't follow your plan, that is not something you should reward. Rather, that's something you should look into yourself and say, why did I do that? And those are the signs of a profitable trader. No more YOLO trading, but rather looking at your trade system and saying there is such thing as a good loss and there is such thing as a bad win. And I need to understand that difference. So ladies and gentlemen, I do hope you found this video useful. And maybe some of the points I made were not things that you had thought of before. Again, I'm just speaking from my own experience and also experience from seeing thousands of traders. But I do think if you watch my last video, which I'm going to tag, this video will make more sense if you also watch that video because they really do connect together. So go ahead and check that video out and I'll see you on the other side.